Hi, I'm Robert Coleman. I'm a Senior Applications Manager at Texas Instruments. Welcome to PowerTest. Welcome to Power Tip 41. In this Power Tip, we will discuss powering double data rate memory, or DDR memory. Double data rate memory is called double data rate because the clock is used both on the rising edge and the falling edge to clock the data into the memory devices. Double data rate operates at very high switching speeds and consequently bus termination resistors are needed to control the impedance on the clock lines. The conventional bus termination is like this picture here. You have a source resistance from the driver driving the bus here, then at the end of the bus the resistor is tied to ground. This gives a termination of, of the characteristic impedance with this resistance here. So when the sending device is high, you have your VDD applied it across the source resistance and the common mode bus resistors and results in a certain amount of dissipation. When it's low, there's no voltage across the two resistors and there's no di dissipation in the resistors. So if you're running at half duty factor, your power in your resistors is equal to V squared divided by two because you half duty factor divided by the two resistors in series. To reduce the power loss in the termination resistors, a second power supply is used in double data rate memory. Uh, here we have again our, our source resistor driving our, our bus capacitance here. And now we've taken our termination resistor from the end of the bus and tied it to a power supply that operates at half the supply voltage. And so in this case, you have equal dissipation in the resistors when the driver is high or when the driver is low. And if you go through the math, you'll find out that if you run at 50% duty factor, you're going to have half the dissipation in these resistors with this mode of termination as you do with the conventional bus termination. So you've eliminated a lot of dissipation with this bus termination scheme. Now you have to work on the power supply requirements. This power supply is going to be kind of unique because if you remember from the uh, previous picture, when all the drivers are high, the termination voltage is actually going to have current flowing into it. And then when the bus driving driver is low, you're going to have current flowing from the power supply into the bus termination resistors. So that means that the power supply is going to have to source or sink current. So current is a function of the driver states. That is that you'll either have to source or sink depending on the number of drivers that are in one particular configuration. So interestingly, if you um, happen to be operating where 50% of your drivers are in a high state and 50% of the drivers are in a low state, you'll find out that you have zero losses from the power supply. And so you can get quite a large reduction in the peak currents that you draw in the power supply depending on the randomness of the states. Many times your power supply may only need to be capable of 10% of the peak power because of the randomness of the drivers. The other thing that creates loss in this system is driving the bus capacitance. Every time you or discharge the bus capacitance, you create losses. And so those losses are dependent on how often you, you clock the data, uh, how much data is being clocked, and then if you have any tri-stated drivers also. So once you have estimated your losses from the randomness of the data and on the driving the bus capacitance, uh, you need to verify them also as they will decide your power supply approach. The big question is, do you need a switcher or, or do you need a linear? When DDR first got popular, it was conventional wisdom just to go with the switcher. Uh, the reason the switcher was ch chosen was because it was capable of high peak powers that you might calculate when you con consider the extreme states, and it was efficient, and there was no loss that was particularly associated with it. So this table presents a, a trade of, of the two different approaches. 
uh, be comparison linear to the switcher. In the first one, it's component count. And it's very clear that an integrated linear regulator is going to have significantly fewer components than the switcher is. And since it has fewer components, it's also going to have a smaller footprint on your circuit board. And in this case, we're showing a four to one difference both in component count and in the circuit area requirements. Now some of the detractors on the linear, the linear is only going to be about 50% efficient, whereas the switcher can be as high as 90% and then it can maintain that high efficiency even down to light loads. And so this translates into dissipation in the power supply. At light loads, in this particular instance, the linear regulator is going to have 200 milliwatts, the power supply will have 20. At heavy loads for this system, the linear regulator is going to be running 2.3 watts of dissipation, whereas the switcher only has a quarter watt. And so this translates into much simpler thermal designs. The next detractor from the switcher, though, is the loop bandwidth. The linear regulator is going to be capable of much higher response speeds than, than the switcher is. And so that will allow you to respond to transient load conditions much quicker. And then the final comparison point is the cost. And in general, the, in these systems, the switcher is going to be at least twice as expensive as the linear regulator. And it may approach three or four times as much. So thank you for your attention in this power tip. There are more power tips on Power Management Design Line. Go to their website and search on power tips, or you can click on the link to all articles in the description section of this video. Thanks.